Hi, Steffi here from The Makers and I'm here today to show you how to make the shell for the tortoise. Now the, it's got an undershell and an upper shell. I'm going to show you how to do the upper shell but the undershell is done um, very similar. Um, the upper shell is a little bit more um, elaborated because you're trying to sort of put that decoration on there and get it to be nice and curved whereas the undershell is just pretty much flat. So um, if you're doing this because you've got our maker's box, the su uh, surprise, uh, not the surprise box, the maker's box turtle, June 2023, you're exactly in the right place if you're watching this any time to make a turtle, then this might be a useful technique to know. So following our instructions um, from the um, turtle um, maker's box, I am now on page seven and step 45, where I'm uh, using the green wool according to the um, to the quantities that are um, prescribed in there. And I'm going to make a, fl a flat sheet of about 13 to 16 centimeters. Now, inevitably you may end up with bits. Okay, so this can happen. What I don't want you to do is, is to sort of add them to the sides and all around. That's not what we're doing. What we are in fact doing is you find um, the larger piece and turn that into the shape that you want it to be and then use the smaller parts, spread them out into a similar size and lay them on top so that the the smaller parts will be a lot wispier and, and definitely smaller but they will cover all of the under parts as well. So you lay them out on top and um, and then you fold the sides in and felt them down and we're using this the same uh, technique that you used to make the undershell um, if you have done that already so we are basically folding the sides in to make a neat edge remember you have a template in our instructions so you will be following the upper shell uh, template in that case so you can um, felt, felt the sides down first and then when you've done that you can take it off the mat if you um, there's a tip here if you go a little bit too um, small you can always stretch it to be a little bit bigger so this is what I've done so far and I'm going to use the template and I hold it against that, that to see so you can see that I'm actually uh, felted it down too much so now you can stretch it out a little bit because you haven't felted it um, without tearing it apart and you're not tearing it apart because you kept the um, the shapes that you overlaid on top of each other, you kept them exactly right. So this looks a much better size now. Um, obviously if you if you are too if you've made it too big then you just keep folding the sides in and felting them down. But now that you've got the right shape all it remains is to felt it nice and firm. And um, I can also do this by using the Clover 5 needle tool which I've got here and you can just literally stab, you're going to stab all of it down into a nice flat shape. You felt it from both sides because we want it to be a nice solid base for um, the next wool that goes on top of it. Remember when you felt something slap flat on your mat, you always have to lift it off and you can turn it round and felt from the other side as well. You can use a single needle, you don't need, need to use a multi-tool, but if you have one then um, it's it's quite useful to, um, to speed the process up if you want. You can also use a three needle felting tool if you've got one of those. Um, you can use um, the this one here as well, which is the a prim needle felting tool. Just be careful with your fingers when you step into this shape because if you get your fingers in the way it really really hurts but you can use that too. Um, you can also hold several needles together in one hand so um, you can use two at one time or even three by just holding them together and stabbing into it. All of this speeds your work up but if you just like working with a single needle then go ahead and work with a sing single needle nice and uh, controlled getting that shape um, neat and the edges do need to be neat so make sure that you stab neatly into the edges as well and um, stabbing all over so this might take a little while I'm going to go back to the um, five needle tool and felting it from both sides 
once it's felt it nice and neat, nice and firm, you definitely will want to work on these um, edges a little bit. So stab into them in a controlled fashion. You don't want a fluffy, fluffy shell on that turtle. Again, remember you can turn your felting mat round if you have a small enough one to keep turning rather than having to lift off off your work but you do have to lift it off occasionally just to make sure that um, you've got a nice um, a nice evenly felted shape but also not attached to your felting mats okay so I I would say that you do need to felt this a lot more especially around the edges but uh, just to save a little bit of time I'm going to consider it finished but when you do this at home make sure that this piece of um, wool has got really neat edges. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to um, use the um, ochre colored wool here and um, that needs to sit on top of the shell and this is a step um, find the page, sorry, rustling around here, apologies. Um, that is step um, 46 on page 7. Um, so you're going to uh, take the ochre wool and um, before you do this in the instruction it tells you to take a pinch um, to one side because you'll need that uh, later on but um, you uh, for the for then you uh, for the for the instructions you take the rest of it and you um, fill the inside of the top shell. Now you're filling the inside of the top shell but you're not going all the way to the edge so you're keeping it about one centimeter away from the edge and make sure that whatever you're putting on top is really nice and even. So you don't want bits of wool right here on the top. So you would probably do the reverse, what you did with the under, sh with the shell, um, with the sh shell earlier so that you don't have bits on top, you have them underneath. And all you're going to do is you're felting into um, the um, ochre, ochre wool on around the edges. You are not felting this flat. It will stay unfelted on top. It's really important because we're li literally never going to felt it. It, um, it. it is quite a crucial part of um, the uh, the shaping of the tortoise's shell. So you're keeping this nice and round. You're just felting it in about one centimeter away from um, the wool underneath. So inevitably it often means that you have to step into the wool underneath again as well. So felt that down. Um, so you have got quite a, a bulged um, shape here. Especially if you've done the um, the, the um, base nice and neat, it looks really nice at this point. I've, I'm not so happy with my neatness of the sh shape underneath, which is why I keep stabbing into it still. But um, you will have spent lots more time on getting this absolutely right. Now the magic bit happens when you start using the contrasting beige wool and you're making um, an oval shape on top of that. So you tease the wool out into a strand and you can sort of um, flatten it with your finger by twisting it between your fingers like that and what you want is you want an oval shape to go on top of that um, shape like that but it, it needs to be a little bit thinner and you felt it on as you go so you can actually tease it still as you go so use your felting needle and now stab into that shape going around the top of the um, the added bulging wool that you haven't felted, just felt it into into the um, ochre color wool here. So I'm not going terribly deep, but I am felting this into the into the yellow wool. Even I'm not going all the way through through the felting mat. Uh, the thinner you make that um, um, stripe, not stripe, that that um, strand, the better and felt that down like that. So what happens now is, is that the wool you're felting or the parts that you're felting into will make a groove, an indentation, and the rest will stay um, bulging out and that gives that effect of, of the tortoise having these lumpy 
uh, segments on top of um, of on top of the shell. And all you need to do now is you are going to um, add. They're quite random, to be perfectly honest, but you're adding um, random shapes into there. So I'm, I'm counting at the moment. Sorry, you've got my head in the way there. One, two, three, four. Um, so it's five segments. So you're adding in five um, lines. You can make these really symmetrical if you want, but they don't have to be symmetrical. So there's one, one line. And remember that each each um, tortoise will be different. And then there's uh, a second line. Yeah. And then if you wanted to um, make it symmetrical, maybe do the same on the other side there, one. If it's too long, tease it off, felt the rest down, and two. That's four now, so you need to do five lines, or however you want to decorate it. It um, so on here it looks a little a lot le a lot more random. I'm trying to make it more symmetrical, and then you can um, put a line here in the middle going across and then maybe splitting these in two. That's just a suggestion. Um, make your own pattern up if you wish. That's how I've done it. Or just be really random. It won't be wrong. Whatever you're doing, it won't be wrong. This is a this is a stylized turtle, so it can be completely um, fantasy, whatever you want to do. Right, here we go. So that's my patterning here on top now. And now I've got to bring the sides in into line with that. And uh, for this, you are just making lines straight to the edge. Again, you can make these um, in symmetry. So if you want to do this in symmetry, then do what you're doing on one side, do the um, mirror image on the other side. So I've done this there now. Now I'm going to do that this um, over there and work your way around. That is that is how you can work in symmetry. Always do something on one side and then copy it onto the other side. In any case, I've not felt it into the, um, the ochre wool at the top at all. So I might do, oh, let's work with this here. Put one here and one opposite, which is this one here. So this is the corresponding opposite. So the groove makes the rest of the wool um, bulge up. I'm going to put one in here. And one opposite. It, it definitely, um, I highly recommend to do the opposites because then you don't lose track where you've been. And one in here. So at the moment I've gone with my um, stripes to go to the outside, I've always gone into the, into the center of um, a stripe. I've done that one already. I think it needs to be going in here. <laughs> I've lost the plot now. <laughs> oh well, never mind. I'm sure you make a much better job of this than I do. But you can see that um, it's slowly coming together, whether it's very symmetrical or not. You you sort of you notice where the where the lines are missing. So just keep putting them down. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you want, basically, unless you've worked this out very well. Maybe do a drawing first if you want this to be 100% symmetrical. Um, and I'm actually going around that edge again because it gets everything gets ever so slightly put out of shape when you're adding new details to, um, to something. So 
Near, nearly getting there, nearly getting there. And in a minute, I'm, I'm actually going to stab into it a little bit more from the side. But when you attach this whole whole shape to your tortoise, it, it will become rounder as well because you need to um, felt it down um, onto the body. So it will have to go, um, you will have to stab into the sides to do this. But for now, this, this looks okay to me. So I'm just going to put um, one more here and another one next to it. And then I consider it finished with the decoration. But what works really nice is that now um, the these little lumps and bumps are sticking up because you haven't felted the um, yellow wool down. So I think that um, works really well to make a shell um, without, well, it's quite an easy way to make a shell. So once it's on the tortoise, the whole thing will bulge around a little bit more. And, um, and then you're obviously felting it because you're felting it onto the tortoise, you're stabbing into the side and it shapes around the body. So you have a lot more of the roundness coming through. So um, this is where you will attach it to um, each other. And this is the undershell, as you can see it here, done in a very similar way, but without the, um, the wool on top that you haven't felted down. But all these stripes and, um, and lines help you to felt the whole um, shape together as well and um, so just keep stabbing into that to add to to shape it to um, sorry attach it to the body parts that um, are inside that shell construct that's it so that will give it a nice solid um, uh, uh, construction and hopefully you um, you get your turtle out there on its um, on its way so um, hope that has helped so making that shell there you go I'll show it a little bit closer up this part here on the edge I would like it to be a lot neater but that will take a little while and I'm sure you've got the time to do it so hopefully this has helped you making uh, the the turtle or a tortoise for that matter um, say it's very similar um, a construct with uh, certainly with the shells See you very soon. Bye.